Welcome to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237. Joining me, our very special guest, is Robert Beal. Robert Beal is an elevator mechanic in the New York City Housing Authority, and he's also the president of the Municipal Elevators Association, known as MIWA. I believe it's Municipal Elevator Workers Association. Absolutely. Known as MIWA. Thank you, Robert, for coming to Reaching Out. Thank you, Greg, for having me on your show. Uh, Most people who do not live in public housing and do not work for NYCHA really don't have an idea of the challenges on a day-to-day basis that the elevator mechanics face. Most people just say our elevators don't work, but there's a lot of factors that go into that. Absolutely. Um, First of all, let me start by saying this. I've been at NYCHA for about 13 years now. I spent eight years in the Marines, and within NYCHA, I've had the privilege of working with some of the most professional dedicated and talented people out there. It is a government job, of course, and our job is to provide a service to the tenants. And we don't take that, you know, we take it very seriously. Um, But overall speaking, the challenges of our job are different from the outside. A lot of people try to compare it. You can't compare it. We have over 600,000 residents riding our elevators. There's no company in the world that that takes care of the amount of people we take care of. And uh, we do it in such a way that our response time is uh, within two hours of getting on a job. Our turnaround time, which is putting a car back in service, is one of the best in the industries, according to, to our figures. And the challenges of working in, in housing are a, a bit different. We all choose to be a mechanic, right? And inherent in that is dangers of our trade. As you can see, when you put it all together, it takes a special grit, a special person, to be an elevator mechanic for the Housing Authority, and I'm proud to be part of it. Uh, Robert, a few years ago, Go back maybe four or five years ago, there was a crisis in the elevator division uh, almost on a daily basis. There were reports in the Daily News, not the Daily News, the New York Times, about the elevators not being repaired, not being fixed, parts were missing, and and there was a crisis. And um, uh, one would say it cost cost a potential chairman his job at the time. Uh, What would you say was the turnaround? in the uh, elevator division because I, I saw there was a big buy-in with the uh, membership. In the, they, the Housing Authority actually at the time rolled up its sleeves and met face-to-face with the men and women of the elevator mechanic because we do have how many women in the elevators? I'm not sure, about, quite I, sure. I, I think it's, it's about... It's a, one or two, I know. It's, I think we yeah. have three mechanics three. right now, maybe okay. one helper, right. Right, which and, is a great thing. And so they met with the elevator division and they uh, assured the elevator uh, division that they were going to work with uh, the elevator um, employees. And there was a, the, the morale was lifted and there was a big buy-in. And all of a sudden, the elevator division was really turned around and work was being done. The parts were being ordered. There was a lot of cooperation. Can, can you tell us about that time? I, I, absolutely. I, I, in my personal opinion, what that has to do with is, if, of course, we're civil service, we're civil servants. We're out there to provide a service to the tenants. But when you're, you're put down all the time and you're not appreciated and, and you're, you're looked over, I guess that's a good way to look at it. When we're looked over, I think NYCHA's personnel, the people that work there, are the most overlooked, underappreciated asset of the housing authority. And when you neglect that, it comes back tenfold. When you pay attention to it and you train and you give safety training and you show you care, you get it back tenfold over. And I think that's really what happened. We, we were stale. We became, we became, in my opinion, again, stagnant in a way, but we went through two mayors, Four chairmen of the housing, or three chairmen of the housing authority, if I'm not mistaken, four heads of the elevator division, all in a quick period of time. That turnover alone builds instability. So I think that's that's key. Once we we realize we're all pointing in the right direction and pulling the same rope, it it, it started turning around. That was the the turnaround there. Now that that would that situation would be good for any industry, sports teams. Any, if anybody goes through that amount of administrative uh, personnel. I could tell you they're not going to be successful, exactly. no matter what, what industry you're in. Exactly. Each has a different agenda, a different budget, a different priority, and we're there trying to be flexible with them and still provide the service we provide out in the field. What would it take to make the next great step forward with improved elevator service and even better security for the tenants and employees? 
I think we're working hand in hand with that right now. It's I'll say it three times, one word, training, training, training. The elevator industry is not slowing down. It's going full steam ahead. Just take, for instance, myself. If I'm on one job for 10 years in the elevator division, I might see one or two controllers if I'm really locked into that. The outside, they're moving ahead. There's new controllers out there every day. So it's not that I'm becoming stagnant. It's because I'm doing my job on my job, and I'm used to this controller. We need to open those doors of opportunity to each and every one of our members to be able to, to further their education, and a better mechanic is a better workplace. Now, now tell, tell me what a controller is, because I know the elevator aspects, where I'm going to get my education from you. <laughs> tell me what a controller is. Absolutely. That's the main system that, that runs the elevator. And uh, you've got some that older ones run on generators, basic electric generators, and the new ones run on what we call frequency drives. We've got both here in housing, so it's such a drastic change. Of one was uh, from the 50s, and the other's modern technology running on you know computer displays, and it's a, it's a big change. You have to be familiar with both a- all aspects of our field. So you you have you the housing authority is utilizing both of those systems. Absolutely, and you've got to be you know you have to be proficient in all of them and all the, the controllers out there, the different drives. And we're trying to keep up with it. We are keeping up. We're doing a heck of a job out there. But, again, the training is the key to it. I mean, technology changes. I mean, if you buy a new computer, right, you're going to get new classes to learn. Even though you know computers, you're still going to upgrade your systems. And that's where we're at right now. We're in that flux stage where we need your helping with us, and we need management to help us too. So is the Housing Authority providing that new training for you? Or? We're looking at it right now. Uh, what's amazing is we have that million-dollar facility in Long Island City, that training facility down there, and we have. We've stepped it up, and, and we've sat down with management, and we started really giving good and detailed training sessions to the mechanics and helpers out there. We started training as teams for the first time, which is re- you work as a team, you should train as a team. So, I mean, we're making steps, major improvements in the, elevated, you know, in the elevators for NYCHA. I, I couldn't be more proud to be part of it right now. I know our members who work in, as an elevator mechanics uh, take great pride in their work in pub- as public employees, especially those serving more than half a million people in the New York City public housing system. Uh, have you heard anything from the, the elevator mechanics that work in the, uh, I would say, municipal agencies uh, like DCAS and Alton Hospital Corporation? Because they maintain the elevators also. How does their job differ from yours? Oh, it's, uh, it's a lot different it, in the structure of it all. Well, we work a lot of overtime. We have to work overtime because of, of the, our, buildings. our buildings. Building. Okay. Yeah, our buildings never stop. Our buildings are 24-7, seven, seven days a week. If you're working in a courthouse, where they shut the elevators off at a certain time. Even some residential buildings that take three or four elevators out of service, let, ours are never taken out of service. So the comparison, yes, they're our brothers, but the comparison stops right about yeah. there. We work on elevators, but the, the demand is quite different. And their, their numbers are a lot smaller than ours. And, uh, but I, I'm not quite familiar with how many elevators they actually service. But, again, it would be the demand factor and the time the, of these elevators running. Now, I understand the concept now because their, their elevators uh, over there, uh, they get less wear and tear because you, the, the utilage is less. The demand is not as great. Holidays, probably the buildings are closed except for the hospitals. But uh, the amount of people and the amount of times the elevators going up and down will affect the uh, – the maintenance of the elevators, so exactly. that's understandable. Exactly. So and you have a crew that's rotating around the clock that's 24 hours a day. Yeah, the take, authority. take us through the day of an elevator mechanic, 24 hours each shift. Okay. Well, uh, my shift is 8 to 4.30, and um, I'm required to take care of my, my development where I'm at, stationed out in the, in the morning. You'll get your daily responsibilities. You'll call up, and if there are any shutdowns, you'll be assigned to a shutdown. If not, you go on what we call preventive maintenance. That's when you'll go out to an elevator, you'll choose an elevator that needs, you know, maintenance. You'll go check it, make sure everything's running properly. And with that being said, our preventive maintenance right now is the highest it's ever been. It's the most, we're getting out there the most we've ever been in the history of the Housing Authority, getting our hands in these elevators, on these elevators, which also sometimes, though, can, can be confused by the tenants. Because when we do this, we're taking that elevator out of service. So, for instance, if I'm working on an elevator and sure. you're getting ready to go to work at 9 o'clock and I've got my signs up, you might be under the impression that that elevator is broken when really it's not. I'm just, for safety reasons, taking it out of service. So I think, and sometimes that gives a, uh, you know, could give a mixed signal to the tenants as well of whether our elevators are working or not working, and that could be a, a big misunderstanding right there. 
Is there a message you would like to share with our local 237 members and our audience listening who are elevator mechanics and to the New Yorkers you serve? Absolutely. Um, they say a professional is someone who can do their job and do their job the best, even when they don't want to. And it's uh, professionalism and dedication that enable us to do that. And that's what keeps us going as civil servants. I mean, we're out there in a rough environment, and it, we're not there for the money because there's money to be made on the outside. We're there because we care and we take pride in what we do. And with management's help, and especially with the union's help, we can pull this all together. Housing is on its way up. You hear a lot of politicians talking about housing. From my opinion, my personal opinion, we're on the way up, not on the way down. Uh, let me conclude by expressing my admiration for the uh, men and women that work in the New York City Housing Authority in the Elevate Division, and you're, you're appreciated by this union, and uh, I know you're appreciated by the residents, even though you know sometimes they just don't say thank you. That's just a word that people don't use all the time. And sometimes you don't hear anything, and I hear the silence is a good thing, you know, sometimes, you know. So you never know. So y your last thoughts? Oh, I just want to, again, thank you for having me on here to clarify a lot of the misconceptions that are out there about NYCHA elevators and, you know, giving us the opportunity to speak our mind. Thanks again, Greg. Anytime. That's all the time we have for this segment of Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. Our very special guest was Robert Beal. He is a elevator mechanic, a member of Local 237. He's also the president of the Municipal Elevator Workers Association, known as MIWA. Robert, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Coming on.